Hey guys, and welcome back to the Keystone 5. I'm Albert, and this week we have another great guest here on the show. This week's guest is none other than Andrew Jones, but before we hear about him, let's roll that intro. Andrew Jones is an alumni of the Brookside Boys and Girls Club. He started off as a child and eventually moved up the ranks to serve as a camp counselor. He graduated from Gardendale High School and is currently pursuing his master's in arts at Covenant Seminary in St. Louis. Right now, Andrew works in vocational ministry and is a counseling intern. His motto is, we are designed for relationships. So let's tune into Andrew and see what he has to say. I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Being a club kid, how old were you when you first attended the club? So, um, I believe I started going at the age of eight. I mean, yeah, you got got to start young, especially. Mm -hmm. But um, what what are your some some of your favorite mem memories from the club as a child? Uh, so, I like I said, I lived right around the block. Yeah, and I, every time I think about the club like the, the first thing that pops out of my mind is that sensation of getting off the school bus, running inside real quick to drop off my book bag, hopping on my bike to, to ride around the, the block. And so like just, man, I can remember having my hands on the handlebars and just that, that sense of freedom and relief, like school's out, yeah. I'm going to get to go around the block. And so first things first, man, like, I'd park my bike, run up the steps to go into the club, would find Todd Love and immediately start annoying him to let us go play football. Uh, that's what I wanted to do every day. Um, every, all the other kids, they would want to do kickball or basketball or uh, whatever, but for me, it was always football. Uh, yeah, man, that was, that was certainly a, a great memory. And, um, and, and, and you know, in our home, my hometown, Brookside, um, when I was in my freshman year of high school, um, but it rained real hard one day and the creek that went through the town, it flooded the whole town. And so my house got flooded and the old club got flooded. And so I think, you know, it's like in the midst of that kind of a chaos, you know, and losing a lot, like seeing the club get back on its feet and the kids getting get to go back to there. And like, I, I just needed that. And even though that was kind of tragic, like, I have a good memory from of, of like getting back into the club and getting back to be around kids. And that's when I, I first became a counselor around that time. And um, yeah, man, that, that's a really strong memory for me too. Working at the club, as, as we both know, I mean, making that impact and making sure that, you know, we understand that we are doing this. This is more than just me, like you said. And yeah. I just want to know, like, what, what were some lessons that you learned at the club because, you know, when you're there, you're, you're always learning as, a, especially growing up, being young to, you know, eventually working one day, you're always learning there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Um, I, you know, I think the club is one of those organizations where they do a really good job of imparting their core values in, into their members, into the, into the kids that they serve. And so certainly positivity and sportsmanship and teamwork like I, I feel like our culture has a tendency to make cliches out of those things but those things are really important and like i feel like there's still something in me where the foundation goes back to the club you know and 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 so i really appreciate that and i, I think you know just like knowing about how important it is that we have adults in our lives and peers in our lives who will speak into our life and, and be positive and call out the good things in us and, 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 and expect more from us. Um, you know, we all hope that we get that in our families, you know, a sense of safety and security, but, you know, seeing that I could get that at the club too. And so receiving that from the staff and from my peers at the club, 
but then doing that in such a way that it, it, it has made me want to turn and do that for other people as well. You know, with those lessons, uh, were you able to, you know, implement those like in a, in a different way? Or do you feel like the same, like to me, I feel like I implement some of the same lessons I learned as a kid. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, thinking back to being a, a staff person, um, yeah, wanting, just wanting to be for kids what the Todd's and LJ's of, of my youth were to me, you know, and, and wanting to be uh, somebody that would instill values in them, like the values that I had learned. Um, wanted to be somebody that was safe. Um, unfortunately, not every kid has an experience of a safe home life and a safe family. And, um, but those things can be made up for in other relationships. And, and so when you've got organizations like the Boys and Girls Club, and that, that's one of the profound benefits of it, is being able to provide that for kids. So yeah, I, I've, I've taken so much of that, not, not just in being on staff at the club, but also in other vocational experiences I've had. And being a parent, I feel like that, that stuff has continued to roll on. Were you able to use some of the lessons you learn as you know at the boys and girls club in your in your parenthood life yeah um there was no way i could have known uh that by being a member and a and a staff counselor at the boys and girls club that years down the road it was going to pay off in the way that i parent my kids you know and and so yeah like um i have, I have a seven-year-old boy and a five-year-old girl and, and and so right now during covid they're stuck together, you know, like, I mean, we're trapped inside much of the day. And um, so like learning to get along and, and learning kindness for each other. Um, th those are things like I'm having to regurgitate a lot of the values that I picked up <laughs> in my youth at the club and imparting that to them, you know, like just constantly reminding them of the most important thing is relationship. The most important thing is the connection between you two. Like the most important thing is looking out for the welfare of your sibling versus yourself. It's special and yeah. it'll, it did. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it'll, it'll stick with you. Like, you know, if, if you have kids of your own one day, yeah. uh, this stuff's going to stay with you and it's going to, it's going to play a big part. Let's talk about more of you now. What, what is your current occupation? Yeah, so um, I graduated from Troy University, and when I was there, um, I became a Christian. And so after that, I joined uh, a staff team at a church in Georgia. And then from there, my wife and I, uh, we moved to St. Louis because we're pursuing our master's in counseling at Covenant Seminary in St. Louis. And so I'm, I'm on a, a church staff team here as well. So yeah, I've been in vocational ministry uh, since I've graduated college. That sounds fun. Um, what, can you go a little bit, just a little bit deeper into, you know, your whole uh, job as a vocational um, minister? Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, and again, going back to the club, yeah. I, you know, like what you and I were talking about, that that sensation of coming on staff as a counselor at the club and knowing I'm a part of something that's bigger than myself, you know, like, and that, that's what we're all after is like, we, we don't want life to be all about us, right? We want to live for something that's bigger than ourselves. And so I think, you know, as I've wrestled with my faith, you know, wanting to be a part of something that's bigger than myself. And so, for me, spirituality, eternal life, the kingdom of God, that, that's the thing that it's, it's so much bigger than me. And I want to tap into that. I want to be a part of that. So that's really has been what has motivated me. But, you know, the taste for that, some of that has an origin in my time at the club and, and wanting to be a part of something significant. Yeah, that, that is, that's powerful. I, I enjoyed this interview so much. I just want to thank you again. Yeah, man. Everyone here at the at the Keystone Five, we we enjoy you for we thank you for joining us today. I mean, Dude, it's my pleasure, man. I, I think this is so cool what you're doing. I'm glad they've gotten the opportunity. Yeah, don't stop doing this, man. This is really cool. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you so much. Wow, that was a great interview. Thanks, Andrew, for joining us here on the show, and thank you, Khalil, for those great questions. If you like this video, go ahead and smash that like button. 
Also, while you're down there, go ahead and comment what your favorite question was and subscribe to our channel. Also, hit that notification bell so you're notified every time we release a new video, just like this one. This has been the Keystone 5, Albert signing off.